it'll be about 118 this afternoon. We saw 119 a couple of days ago. How much water do you really need? Tom Fergus is at the Arizona Science Center, and I'm looking forward to this because this is interesting. Yeah, you know, it's a lot more than you think. That's for sure, Celeste. But check this out. This is the, the word of the week here at the Science Center. Sunburn. A sunburn is damage to the skin due to the ultraviolet rays from the sun. You know, I have, I have my buddy, Siri, who's going to explain everything to us. Siri, how are you? I'm doing all right, Tom. So we're very curious. I, whenever I work out, especially this time of year, it's like I lose so much water. Oh, my gosh. I'm sweating so much. Oh. How, how much are we talking? All right. We're talking about a lot. Matter of fact, I have some visuals. Well, actually, let's check it out. Yeah, yeah. So come on over. Um, because sweat is not a bad thing. A lot of people think, oh, I'm sweating, I'm sweating. Sweating is actually your defense against heat. That's how your body cools itself off. Yeah, Troy likes to call it lather up. I get a little lathered up. Yeah, you get lathered up. I glisten. <laughs> yeah, first of all, I don't sweat, I perspire. All right, let's just get that out. I listen. <laughs> um, so that sweat that you feel totally normal, and of course, in this amount of heat, we're going to be sweating even more. You want to be sweating more to help cool yourself down. Yes. If people are moving around outdoors or doing any sort of strenuous activities, that's also going to increase sweat production. So mm -hmm. what is normal? Yeah. So that's, that's a great question. It's different for everybody, but we're going to use some generalities here. Okay. So this is about 500 milliliters of water. Mm -hmm. That could be normal in an hour. But it could also be normal to go up to two or four liters. This is two liters of water right here. That's how much you would be sweating. In an hour, wow. yes. You so what are we looking in at in a big picture? All right, so big picture, if you can do two liters an hour for 24 hours, of course, you're probably not sweating like that for 24 hours, sure. but let's say even five hours a day, yeah. you're talking about 10 liters of water, which is actually, there's a little more than that right here. So this wow. is not an unreasonable amount of sweat to produce in a day if you were outdoors in this heat. If your loved one works construction, or I had a guy come over and change out the windshield on my car. And it was the ninth car he did that day. He was drenched. So I brought him a whole bunch of waters and some Powerade for sure. Well, and that's so important, replenishing water. You need to drink about 16 ounces of water every hour to be able to replenish that water. And that Gatorade is really important too because it has electrolytes, so helping to replace the salts in your body. All right, you very cool. Okay, so we have a thermometer, uh, and I like to do this just to really quick check it out, see what my temperature is. And Every time, it just says you're cool. It just, it just <laughs> says you're cool. I should do with sunglasses on. <laughs> cool. All right, I'm 97.7. I'd listen to that radio station. Right. Explain to us how this works. All right, so this is an activity we do at the Science Center to show how sweating works. This is just water. So if I spritz it on your skin here, mm -hmm. you were 97.7 when you scanned. So let's scan again. And look here, 83 degrees. So this is evaporative cooling. This is how sweat works, that reduction in temperature helping to keep you cool. Really cool. One last visual. Oh, this is the one I really want people to see and understand when you get too hot, this is what's going on with your blood. Yes. So over here, um, you're, of course, you're mostly water in your body. So your blood is also mostly water. Yeah, so, so you're just cooling around. You're not hot at all. You're just walking around. So one of the things that can happen with extreme heat exhaustion is thickening of the blood. So as your heart is trying to pump it when it's thick, we've got corn syrup over here. You can see it's really hard to pump. This is an extreme example, sure. but just showing you how difficult that can be on your heart thicken blood. Of course, heat has other effects on your organs, not just the dehydration, but it can interrupt cell activity. Your brain starts to shut down. There are really bad things that happen in extreme heat. Yeah, that's why hydration is so important, you guys. Keep that blood fluid, that's for sure, during this heat. Yeah, how about that, you guys? This much water just to get through the day, this is what you could lose in one hour. You lose uh, that all just I can in think one about hour. is that crazy. makes you think about how much My you can drink. Heart pumping that syrup now, Tom. I'm, I'm worried yeah, about Yeah, you know, I've always I've I've understood st heat stroke and I've done stories about it, but this is a great visual. It's like your water goes from something that's really fluid, with your blood I should say, it's really fluid, to something that is not fluid at all, and then that leads to shutting down organs and all that bad stuff. Wow. That's why you need to stay Scary hydrated. Stuff. We always say it, but we're not joking around. Yeah? Yeah. All right, Tom. Thank Tom you. Tom Fergus, thank you.